Hello everyone, today I'd like to talk a little about gesture drawing. I've been a little caught up in a project of mine and I've been doing quite a lot of them and as I know myself to be quite imperfect when it comes to basically anything related to drawing, I decided to educate myself on gesture drawing and everything that goes a little into that. During that education period, I've discovered that you can do gesture drawings one way or another and one way is definitely easier. And because I am such a generous human being, I will share whatever I have discovered on my learning journey about gesture drawing, starting with the most important thing that probably everybody does wrong, at least in my opinion. It is about timed drawing exercises. When I hear the term gesture drawing or figure drawing, I can immediately hear my timer go off inside of my head. It's like having PTSD from figure drawing sessions where you're not done and the model already changes position or your timer is up and the picture is just gone. Yes, most people do timed poses, which in and of itself is not bad. However, during my little education journey, I picked up that it is vastly more valuable to you in learning and in motivation if you first assess how long do you need to make a gesture drawing and then you decide what kind of poses you draw in what time all while considering that you need to change pages you need to observe your reference a little bit before you draw and so on the thing is if you push yourself you know with limited time that's great however if you're not a real good gestural drawer then the timer is only going to make you panic once you see that you only have 10 seconds left, basically leading you to absolutely butchering the drawing that you've done. Making gestural drawings is very beneficial and I absolutely recommend it to everybody that likes to draw humans or whatever at any given time. But if you're not already really good at them, then maybe just don't set yourself a timer and just still work efficiently. You know, don't set yourself a timer, but make a stopwatch and then see how long you've had for the drawing. With the goal in mind that when you've done your 20th or 200th gesture drawing, that you look down to your stopwatch and you see you've been quite a bit faster than the first time around. Now, the second mistake that I have been doing definitely too many times is not having a loose grip. I mean, I had a loose grip. However, my loose grip is definitely a very tight grip for basically everybody else. Since when I have a not loose grip, I basically tighten my hand around my stylus like I'm riding a banana boat or something. And learning that, now when I do gesture drawings, I specifically try to have the loosest grip possible. I had to adjust my tablet's pen pressure sensitivity a little bit, but now it works perfectly fine. The only downside is sometimes when I have my grip so loose, and I do a big stroke, my stylus just flips out of my hand, which mostly results in my cat being violently woken up from her afternoon nap by a flying stylus. But sacrifices have to be made. The third tip that I got is to count my lines, and not in actuality counting the lines, but more in make your lines count. Rather than drawing one stroke 10 times until it is perfect, erase it or undo it and draw it again. Only have strokes in the same direction and whatever overlapping each other if you really want to emphasize this part of the pose. The gist of it is to make every stroke that you do make the most work that it can do. So basically the less strokes you have to do until you have a complete gesture drawing that reads well and you know the gesture and whatever, the better. That also plays in with your time management. If you usually have like 500 strokes for one painting of a gesture drawing, then you'll be cutting down on time if you only have 100 strokes, just because the physics of it. I mean, making 100 strokes is just easier and faster than 500. And if it looks the same, that's a win-win. Now, let's get to what you are actually drawing. And one of these two things I have caught myself doing a lot and that would be drawing the anatomy as correct as possible now in the words of the guy that i've talked to fog anatomy at least when it comes to gesture drawings because they're not meant to be anatomically correct of course they should look like humans but that can be achieved with basic proportion which i wouldn't count to anatomy or at least it's such basic anatomy that this should be basically muscle memory by now because by drawing the anatomy correctly of course we learn the anatomy a little better however we're not here to learn anatomy, we're here to draw gestures. And sometimes drawing a 
powerful gesture, like in a moving pose, means to squish and squash the anatomy to further emphasize this kind of movement. Where we've got only lines and no other tools to convey movement, then we're just a janky tube with some sticks sticking out. And drawing that correctly and having it move on the page is kinda hard. At least too hard if you wanna draw it in a few seconds to a few minutes. Therefore, basic proportions are well enough. You can always go over your gesture drawing sketches and whatever to make a anatomically correct mannequin. And if your gesture drawings convey movement, then the mannequin will most likely do so too. And since we're at anatomically correct mannequins, you know what they have? Hands and feet. And boy oh boy, do I see a lot of gesture drawings that just don't have hands and feet. Either they are conveniently placed behind the body or some other body part that's sticking out, maybe even behind some kind of prop that they're holding. And their legs usually just end at the ankles. And let me tell you, that's pretty bad. Because even just a slight indication of what the hand is doing, it doesn't need to be a perfectly rendered hand or foot, but a slight indication, a triangle and maybe two boxes for the hand and just a single triangle for a foot. Everybody can do that and everybody has time for that. So why not just do it? It really adds to the pose and drawing the feet makes the figure just be grounded more. You know, it actually looks like a figure and not just some weird abstract shape from afar. Which is kinda the whole point of drawing gestures. Well, and now I have saved the absolute best tip and, well, worst mistake that probably everyone does, including me sometimes, for last. That's right, I lied at the beginning. It wasn't the best tip that I had. Because the absolute best tip and worst mistake that you can do is not observe your reference for a little bit before drawing. When you do some gesture drawings, most people, they look at the drawing and start making an action line and then start sketching. And every now and then, they look up to the reference again and again, which is a fine way to do it. However, if you just observe for maybe a minute before you draw, and kind of make a game plan about what goes where and how do you want to draw it, maybe how does the negative space look, that's gonna make the drawing process of the gesture much easier. And in turn, it's going to make you much faster at drawing that. And even in another turn, it also makes you use less lines because you already have a game plan on how to draw it, which in turn, in turn, in turn, again, makes you have even less time for one gesture drawing. So basically by using a little bit of time to making a game plan and you know trying to figure out how to draw it without actually drawing it, you're gonna be able to draw it much faster than without, saving you all the time that you've spent observing your reference. And observing your reference diligently also expands your visual library much better than just looking at the reference, drawing again, looking at the reference and continue to drawing again. And with a well expanded visual library inside your head, you'll be able to draw most poses just without reference. But I will always recommend use the reference even if you do not need it. Now, how did you like these little tips about gesture drawings? They certainly have helped me put my gesture drawings on a whole other level. Some things I can even apply in not gesture drawing, but just simple painting and sketching and whatever. Other things I basically knew and they just got refreshed again and that's also good. If I haven't said anything about gesture drawing tips that you know and would like to share, share them in the comments. Maybe I'll make a part two if we have like a lot, a lot of things that come together. But until then, or just the next video, happy drawing and goodbye.